Twin Motion. Let's get into Twin Motion. Wait a minute, this isn't Twin Motion. Actually, this is Chief Architect, and this is going to be a video about exporting um, your 3D files into Twin Motion. So, uh, the platform we're going to use is Chief Architect Premiere, which is um, an architectural drafting, designing, modeling software. Um, but a lot of these same concepts that we're going to be applying um, in prep for an export into Twin Motion. Uh, or rather export and then import into twin motion are, are, are going to apply to multiple different modeling softwares um, some of the things that we're going to go over in this video um, and this is the first of a series this is you know prepping it for export and import into uh, twin motion um, some of the things that we're going to go over are very specific to chief architect this particular modeling software so let's just get those out of the way in, in case you're here from a different software and you're just trying to learn how to prep for uh, your import into twin motion so um, a couple of things with this particular software the terrain model um, which is this is my terrain this big huge vast terrain uh, model and now I expanded this uh, specifically because I want to carry over my geometry from my terrain model into Twin Motion. Twin Motion has its own um, capabilities for terrain, uh, but I'm not going to utilize them. I'm going to, you know, say that I got this from a surveyor. I'm going to take this um, surveyed model and import it into Twin Motion. So the problem with Chief Architects, um, the way they do terrain is that, and, and you'll see this, and we're going to give an example of this in Twin Motion. But when I go to apply, um, a, say I want to apply grass to my terrain model, um, this terrain model is not clipped by any of the overlapping geometry, which means if I apply grass to the terrain model as a whole, it's going to show through my street, it's going to show through my driveway, it's going to show through you know, any other features that I may have in here, um, which is a big problem. So what I end up doing is I end up taking the time, and yes, this is time consuming, but actually going through and using the terrain tools um, to you know, create my terrain areas where I know that there's going to be grass, where I know that there's going to be dirt. And that's going to make my process in Twin Motion a lot easier. So that's something you should take the time to do. And because I'm going to use some of the default materials that are built into Twin Motion, I'm not too worried about what materials I apply to my terrain features in this model. You can see I've got, you know, a pink section here, a green section here, a white section here. That's because I know that I'm going to use um, maybe three different types of grass or dirt from Twin Motion um, to get more of a realistic feel. So I'm not too worried about what I'm actually applying here because eventually these are going to be. Um, overridden by other materials and same thing goes for your interior model uh, if you know that you may have some better uh, materials built in twin motion or you've built up your library so even if you're not a beginner you've built up your library in twin motion maybe you just need some place marker materials which if you look at my bottom toolbar here I have a bunch of place marker materials that I use so um, there you go uh, the next part about this is that I want to set this up um, to look realistic. I'm going to have some accessory structures. A uh, couple things. These structures are actually just symbols of previous designs I've done in the past where I've taken the home, I've turned off all my layers, my interior layers, anything that I don't need to represent this as a 3D. Um, model and then selected the entire house and converted it to a uh, symbol just by using my tools um, and then symbol in 3d view and convert to symbol I can convert this whole thing to a symbol drop it in my library and that's how I get an accessory structure that doesn't have too many uh, poly faces and, and just looks nice in the background so that's what I've done here I've drawn in a couple draw driveways um, my sidewalks etc so now that we have this all set up and we're in a 3D view, and, and keep in mind in Chief Architect, you can only export 3D from a 3D view. So we have to pull a 3D view, and then now we're going to export from here. There's a couple different options that we have. Now DAE is a very popular option for exporting because the vertex limit, which is um, say the number of vertices in a model, which could be, you know, um, in particular, the Kohler catalog. Kohler catalog has a certain items that have a high vertex level and they exceed the limit of some of the other 
3D exporting um, options. So DAE has a high vertex limit. You can pretty much get any of your custom fixtures uh, and export them out of the model. Now, that's great. That's fantastic. I get the appeal there. Um, my problem comes with the naming convention from DAE, and I, and I don't like the way that it converts the model into um, separate sections that have no reference to what they actually are in the geometry of the model. Um, and so I like to export 3DS. Now I'm going to hit a wall here because, well, there's some mi missing textures from the interior and I'll uncheck truncate texture names. I like to see the full texture names because sometimes if I'm missing a texture, I can locate it. And then I'm going to export this. This particular model is called the Met and it's going to take some time to export. Now, usually this part of the video, I would fast forward through and just make a cut so that you can see the next step, but the 3DS export is actually pretty fast. So I also didn't want to make a video cut here because I want to show you that it's going to come up with an error and the error is going to specifically be one of those vertex errors where um, I've got something in this model that exceeds the vertex limit. So there you go, just talking it through. Uh, the last thing to just kind of fill in while we're waiting for this to process uh, is that some of the elements in Chief Architect, if I want to save a particular bush because it's not, or a plant or a, or a tree because it's not available in uh, Twin Motion, you can import any of these assets from Chief Architect uh, into Twin Motion or any other software for that matter. Just keep in mind that you need to make sure your um, your, the, the item that you want to save and import into Twin Motion should be on the 00XY axis and actually the Z axis as well because when you go to import it as an item to be saved into your library it's going to carry that axis over. So if the axis of this particular model is in the center of the home and I want to save this tree and bring it into three uh, twin motion and save it to the user library in twin motion to be used later uh, the problem is that it's going to place with a big offset and it's going to be far more difficult to manipulate in twin motion and funny this we actually didn't see a vertex limit um, problem with the 3ds file so I'm gonna go ahead and save this I'm gonna exit out of chief architect and we will get into twin motion Okay, we are in twin motion and the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to ask me what do I want my navigation mode to be and there's a couple of different options. The default twin motion action, you know, these are all self-explanatory. I'm not going to go through it. I just know that I in particular like the SketchUp mouse motion. So there we go and now we get to do our import and so we've got a couple options we want to take a look at here um, and one is we've got this option collapse by material or we've got keep hierarchy or collapse all. I like to keep hierarchy. And the reason being uh, is because what's gonna happen is it's gonna import with all of my walls named as walls. Wall one, wall two, wall 40. Uh, and you know, same thing, terrain one, terrain two, terrain four, something like that. Collapse my, by material, those same walls are, are gonna show up, instead of being walls, they're gonna be chipboard one, and my terrain's gonna be you know, grass one, grass two, dirt three. So it's a matter of preference. I know that I like to keep the hierarchy because it's, it's just how I think, it's how I organize things, it's how I organize all of my 3D models. So I'm gonna collapse, no, excuse me, I'm gonna keep hierarchy, and check this fix UV texture in case I've got any issues there. Um, and then let's see, I believe we already opened up our model. Maybe we didn't, okay. So this is an old project of mine done for Friesen Builders out of Northern California, I believe, or Oregon. Um, and I'm in 3DS. 
here we go with a dated folder now he, here's the first thing you, you might notice it doesn't seem like there's any file in here and you just need to scroll down here if you're in Windows Explorer and make sure we check our other options because here's where our 3ds and a DAE file live the Collada file so there we go there's my met 3ds and it's gonna process for a little bit and we'll come back Okay, so now we're in the model. We've you know gotten past a few missing texture errors. And this is the first thing you're gonna notice usually, and this has been the case for me. I, and keep in mind, a little disclaimer, I have not watched any videos on Twin Motion. I don't know how this software works. This, so this is why I would call it a beginner video. Keep in mind, I'm very versed in similar software. So this isn't going to be all that different to me. I've got maybe 10 hours into this software. So I know so far that every model I've brought in ends up being behind me. So I'm going to rotate around uh, and position my camera just so I, you know, kind of know what I'm looking at. There we go. So kind of the first thing we're going to see is we've got this like material here that seems to have come out of nowhere. And what that is, is that's the ground plane, the infinity ground plane for twin motion. And for the purpose of this rendering, I want to get rid of that. I've got my own terrain. I've got my, you know, my draw distance is basically what I want it to be, which is this, this terrain model carries out pretty far. And we see a city backdrop, which we can change later. But we want to get into the fun part of this, which is touching on some of the, um, the grass and all that that's going to be in the next video for this video we're just working on the import of our model so first up I'm going to delete that terrain and then pretty much see what I was looking at in chief architect now what you'll notice is a navigation of the model is a lot snappier than what we had in chief architect this software is purpose built for this reason so um, if you're if you're new to this you know you'll enjoy that right away so let's see the first thing I want to take a look at and maybe make some repairs to uh, introduce you to is we've got this left pointing carrot here in the top corner I'm hitting my control button hopefully you guys can see that if you look at the top right corner we've got a left carrot I'm gonna click that and what it's gonna show me is this is my scenography or scene graph um, and this is the organization of my model. Now, I want to do a few things to organize this model before I even dig in. And that is, I, I kind of want to isolate my terrain from the rest of the model because that's really all I'm going to be using Twin Motion to do is kind of fix my terrain. So, um, the best way to do that is set up some folders and start organizing. Now, the problem with um, Twin Motion is that there is no there's no move command there's no way I can select four things and send it to another folder what I have to do is drag it to another folder so far that I know unless someone knows something um, different than I do and please add that to the comments but we're in twin motion the date is let's see April 19 2020 so um, there may be a new version where where they fix this but for the time being I don't have any quick way of, of dragging this into a folder other than dragging it and and carrying it down the hierarchy so to kind of avoid the, the that painstaking process because if I want to select you know my windows and put them in a folder I've got to select them and then drag it and drag it and carry it on and even if I use my 3d mouse to speed up this movement it's still dragging through the hierarchy forever so I'm going to hit escape and just stop doing that. Uh, so the quick and easy way around this, which is really rudimentary, is in the scene graph. I'm going to click the scene graph. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do a new container. And I'm just going to put something like, um, let's just all cap sort. And so it's, it's almost like I'm going to do a, um, like a deconstructed version. Let's see, what's the... Uh, don't know the proper terminology here for this and let me actually change this name to something where it places itself above my scene graph there so hey <laughs> simple enough right 
And then I'm gonna click on my scene graph and I'm just going to uh, sort by alphabetically. There we go. So now I can open up my Met3DS folder and just start grabbing things that I know I don't care about. They're not part of the terrain model. I just wanna grab them, get them out of the way until I get something that I know is part of the terrain model. So I'm going to, basically I'm like deconstructing this. So the Bain Bridge, these are all chairs, base cabinets, a bunch of other stuff. Let's grab all this. Only as much as I can tolerate dragging up to this A folder and just get it out of the way until I can start to isolate. And I mean, this just takes some time. So we're just going to do a little video cut and we'll get you to where we're finished up on that. Okay, so we're back. It took about, oh, I'd say about two and a half minutes, a little bit of work here. And so now the model is separated from the terrain. I could go up and, you know, and, and divvy this stuff up. It really depends on how detailed we're going to get. And, and sometimes I do get very, very detailed. Um, and dividing these things into folders makes a big difference for one very strong reason. As you add assets from Twin Motion into the model, it will live under the. Um, location or, or the item that you may have attached that asset to at times if you're going to change the color or you're going to apply a decal you want it to live in the model where it's going to be easy to find so that's a big part of this import export process is as you get a very robust model it's good to keep your scene graph very well organized so what I might go do before we do another video is I might even go in and, and modify these things by folder so that I have plants, I have trees separated from other items. Um, so that's it for this this particular video. We've got our model inside of Twin Motion. We're ready to work on it and we'll carry on to the next video where we start doing some basic, um, we're gonna add some grass and, and a couple of other terrain features.